Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Daniela and today I will talk about beading threads you will need uh, if you want to start making bead jewelry. I'll also be sure uh, to add some tips and tricks I've picked up over the years of working with beads. I have four types of nylon thread here. They are common, uh, much used. And I will tell you about each of them. I have Nymo, Eslon, 1G and KO and one type of braided thread fire line. When I started with beads no one told me so I used a transparent nylon silk thread uh, monofilament for my first pieces. I chose it to start with because I thought it would be so uh, versatile. I thought that if I bought the transparent thread it would be versatile and I could use it for all bead colors not to have spent money on some colored threads right off the bat, which were also much more expensive. But it's quite hard to sew with. It twists and it's so stiff. So sewing a peyote bracelet is a struggle and the result doesn't look nice because it twists in different ways. I hardly ever use it now, just sometimes for 3D beady sculptures with crystals. Uh, so what to buy to start with? I think you can get Nymo in two colors to start with. Cream, uh, which you can use on all the light colored beads and black, uh, which you use when sewing dark beads. I think that Nymo is kind of a standard. The advantage is that it's cheap and easy to find and get. I was going to tell you for each product how much they probably cost, uh, but prices vary a lot around the world, so I don't know if that would make sense, uh, but at least to give you a bit of an idea. And when I compared prices, uh, I was quite surprised that in the USA the same products are about 50% uh, or more expensive than here in the Czech Republic. Even products that are uh, made in the USA. I will show you that here in the table for interest. Here on the left you can see how much thread is in the spool. It varies a lot and uh, here on the right is a comparison of how much one spool costs. They are listed from uh, cheapest to most expensive. I based this on average prices I found online. Uh, I've put it in dollars for a comparison. We don't use dollars in the Czech Republic, of course, but we have our own currency. Uh, but if taxes are added, then importing from the Czech Republic to the USA would probably not be so attractive. Okay, uh, enough about numbers. Uh, especially in the beginning you will be tearing apart your first attempts a lot. Uh, so it's better to destroy a cheap Nymo or Eslon than a super expensive Fireline. So as I said, the advantage of this thread is that it's cheap, it's slightly waxed and lightly twisted and it comes in a wide range of colors. Uh, if I count correctly, there are 23 colors and 5 thicknesses from 0.05 to 0.4 millimeters. Uh, but as you can see in the table, not all colors are produced in all thicknesses. You'll probably get the most use out of uh, D thickness, which is 0.3 millimeters. I use this thread thickness most often. I think they are perfect for beginners. Um, the disadvantage is that they fray very quickly. They are quite stretchy. It's a good idea to stretch it a little before sewing. It's easy to form a knot on them and they tear, especially when you want to undo some steps. These disadvantages uh, sounds pretty awful, but it's actually not such a tragedy. I think anyone uh, who doesn't have comparison with other brands or uh, with other threads will be fine with sewing with Nymo. Like I said, for beginners they are great. Uh, once you get experience with bead weaving, you will probably use other threads and use Nymo, uh, for example, for bead embroidery. Uh, even though I've been sewing for many years, I still buy Nymo because you just don't want to sew a bead embroidery on very expensive threads, for example. Uh, they don't provide any advantages there, so it doesn't make sense. Another similar thread is Superlon or Eslon if you want. I'd call it a better Nymo. Together with Nymo thread, 
I would say that they are suitable for beginners who are buying their first beading supplies. It comes in uh, 36 colors and two sizes. Uh, this thread is also very cheap. The price is comparable to Naimo. Uh, in some e-shops I even found that Eslon is cheaper than Naimo. For example, on Etsy a single spool sells for $1.75. It has 79 meters. It's stronger than Naimo and easier to sew with. Uh, this thread has almost no stretch. Uh, it frays too, uh, but not as much as Naimo. If you get tired of it, uh, it can also be used in bead embroidery. As you can see, compared to Naimo, it's more flat, so you are more likely to sew through with a needle. Next, I have Toho 1G here. At first glance, it looks like other nylon threads, but um, as soon as you start sewing with it, you will find it's very strong for its thickness. Its thickness corresponds to Naimo B and it comes in 12 colors. The advantage is that almost no knots form on it at all. Knots on the thread during sewing are quite annoying. And the big advantage is that it doesn't fray. Uh, even when sewing with pressed beads or if you undo so the stitches frequently. It's one of my favorite threads, but it's pretty expensive. One spool is only 46 meters and it costs about uh, $6.66 .66 on Etsy. It's uh, frequently more than four times more expensive per meter than Naimo or Eslon. KO Nylon Thread is pre-waxed, colorfast, abrasion and tangle resistant thread, uh, which can be knotted tightly and securely. Its thickness corresponds to Naimo B and it comes in 24 colors. KO thread has a um, circular cross section, which means it's much easier to thread onto your needle than Eslon. And it has one interesting feature, and that is that it can be stretched, but it snaps back into position, so it's perfect for bangles. When you sew a bangle with the thread, you don't have to uh, sew it uh, long enough to roll it over the widest part of your hand, over, over the knuckles. You might as well sew it uh, so that it uh, fits your wrist perfectly and doesn't have to be that much bigger. You'll be able to stretch it over the knuckles and uh, it bounces back to the original shape. This thread is also very good to work with and it's nice that I don't get uh, the thread pierced by the needle during the sewing process like with Naimo or Eslon that happens to me quite often. It is also quite expensive. A spool of 50 meters costs about uh, $5.14 on Etsy. So, if I had to rank these nylon threads from the best to worst according to my preference, the top spot uh, would go to 1G, then KO, Eslon and Naimo. But you may feel differently about that. Feel free to let me know down in the comments. I'm curious to hear your opinion. Uh, for example, as I found out, a lot of people hate Eslon. Uh, they, they would rather choose Naimo. I'm the opposite. And ta-da! Fireline. I think Fireline has a special place among beading threads. Uh, Fireline is thermally fused thread. It's pre-vexed braided cord consisting of gel spun polyethylene which is known as the strongest fiber per diameter ever created. I'm in love with this thread. It comes in crystal, smoke and smoke gray color. I didn't include it in the comparison table because um, it's different uh, from the other threads in the material and features. It comes in a wide range of sizes from 0.07 millimeters to 0.22 millimeters. Uh, you will have even more choice if you buy your fur line at a fishing tackle store, not a bead store. The only disadvantage is perhaps the price. Otherwise, I think it has only advantages. 46 meters uh, costs about $12. So it's almost eight times more expensive than the Naimo and almost twice as expensive as the 1G. But it's worth it. But, uh, but as I mentioned, uh, try ordering Fireline from Fish and Tackle sometime. 
you can get the same product there uh, for half the price if you are lucky. For example, here in the Czech Republic you can buy it uh, by the meter. One meter here costs about three Czech crowns, which is about 13 cents in, in the US. It's a pretty good deal. Uh, so let's take a closer look. It's, as you can see, it's nicely structured. It's pretty much stiff and rigid. Uh, you can see that it holds its shape very nicely. You need a very sharp scissors to cut it unless you, you want splintered ends. It has a very good resistance to stretching and to breaking. Uh, this thread is not suitable for bead embroidery. Well, you can use it, but I don't see the point in doing it. Compared to other threads, there will be no advantage at all and it will be unnecessarily expensive. But otherwise you can use it for basically all bead projects. You don't even have to worry about sharp beads. Uh, where other threads would break, Farallon will hold up. I think uh, what I like the most about it is that it's firm and holds its shape. The beadwork doesn't fall apart under my hands during the sewing process. Uh, for example, when I sew a peyote bracelet, uh, the work um, is as strong as a board. And in terms of sizes, I mostly use size 0.12 millimeters. It's such a versatile size, in my opinion. Okay, for beginners, it's probably up to each person to decide whether or not they want to invest in such a thread. So, to sum up. If you are a beginner and will be doing a lot of undoing your steps, Please, native speakers, please write me some synonyms uh, for how to say I need to remove some beads, go back a few steps in my work, remove a thread. I hope you know what I mean. So for beginners, I recommend Naimo or Eslon to get started. You definitely don't have to buy a whole color palette right away. You can get by with beige and, and black, possibly white. Uh, use the beige in combination with color beads like red, blue, yellow, etc. It's not necessary to have the thread directly in the color of the beads. If you want something better, then try KO or 1G. These threads will be lovely to work with, but they are more expensive. And the absolute classic is Fireline. It's beautiful to sew it, but it's very expensive. And it's usually cheaper in fishing tackle than bead stores. And that's all for today. Uh, drop me your thoughts down in the comments. Uh, if you have any tips for interesting threads, please let me know too. I'll be happy to try them out. And if I like them, I'll make a video about them again to share with others. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you next time. Bye!